Welcome back to Babington Europe TV. I'm uh, with Richard Vaughan, CEO of Babington Ireland. Richard, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Richard, we're here at the uh, European Men's and Women's Teams Championship. Um, you're here, as I said, as CEO of Babington Ireland and also team manager, doubling up this week in, in some respects. Um, what are your uh, hopes for the Irish teams this week? Uh, we've got some good groups. Um, the women in particular have got uh, good chances against Slovenia and Slovakia and a difficult match against Russia. So uh, the men play Germany and Israel. So I think in both cases we're targeting second in the group and then really trying to make a challenge against the top teams. We brought some young players with us, so it'll be interesting to see how they get on. And um, I think it'll be a, a good challenge for everybody individually. Yeah. I was just speaking to uh, Finn Thera Pansen there and he was telling me that they have brought some young players, obviously in their Danish team and they're always at a high level. Mm -hmm. But as you said, you brought a few young players here. Tell us about those players, which ones in particular can we look out for? Obviously, we've um, got more established younger players like Sam McGee that are yeah. still um, developing. We brought um, Alana Stevenson, a uh, 16-year-old, first cap, so she'll be looking to challenge in the, in the singles and doubles in both events, and mm -hmm. I think she'll do well against Slovenia and Slovakia in, in particular. Um, and then really the rest of the team are um, already established, like I said, Sam and Sinead, who's 21. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think we're just looking to try and take the next step up, really, and move away from junior Bampton and try and win at the uh, international. Richard, you've come into Bampton Ireland uh, in the last uh, year or so as CEO, and I think anybody in uh, European Bampton realised that uh, something needed to be done. You know, that's coming very hard for me to say as an Irishman, but uh, looking at y what you've done already, certainly the way I look at it, uh, you've done or are, are doing a tremendous amount of work. Uh, what are the key areas for you to uh, to, e to get Babington in Ireland up to the level it is in uh, other countries in Europe? Well, I think it's really that infrastructure. So one of the things that stepped out for me is uh, trying to build a coaching team. Mm -hmm. So having more good coaches that can work with the junior age groups, work with the clubs, work with the branches, and try to, to develop them and really help bring the young players through. Mm -hmm. um, we spend a lot of time on coach education and, and skills-based programs. Again, trying to link that to the coaches and the players. So really trying to, to put the, the basics in place and, and build a pyramid structure but from the base up rather than the, the top down. And how do you, uh, you know, okay, that's, that's the dream and that's what you need to do. Obviously, uh, you know, times are hard uh, economically all around Europe. Um, how difficult is it to work within the tight constraints of a really tight budget? Yeah, really difficult, especially in Ireland. We've had some real big cuts the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, austerity measures are taking impact on sport as well. So mm -hmm. it's really... Um, trying to do more with what we've got. Um, luckily in Ireland there's lots of volunteers, really big membership base mm -hmm. and it's really trying to, to use those members, the coaches, trying to develop them and use their enthusiasm really to try and do more with what we've got and I think we've already made uh, big progress with that and it's just trying to, to keep everybody moving in the right direction. Uh, anyway, again, looking at it almost from the outside in, you know, there is, we can see in Ireland that there is a little of a, bit of a gap. There's been a lost few years, let's face it, and uh, and this seems to be the turnaround here. You, you, I said Alana is here and a couple of other young, younger players. Is the junior setup a really important focus for you? Yeah, we recently launched uh, the development group, which is uh, 15 to 19 year olds. Um, we've got some real good talents, like around Lalana's age, um, Rachel Dara, yeah. and a few others in that age group, sort of around the 15 mark. So we've got a, another group of youngsters coming through. So it's really trying to put in place a, a pathway for them to develop and um, I guess Sinead and Tony are at the top end of that junior pathway at the moment and um, the challenge with them is to make the next step into professional badminton um, and once we've done that we've got a good complete pathway so um, like I said for me the challenge is at the moment just to get more coaches and uh, trying to use them more with our junior teams. You know when your tenure ends uh, Richard I, I don't know I think it's maybe a two-year contract you have whatever it may be you know what would when you walk away eventually what is the legacy you would you would like to leave behind in Ireland? I think it's really just have that, that pathway finished. So have the, the coaching process in place, have the, the coach education systems finished and in place and really have a, a good established coaching team. Um, I'm sure the, the players in Ireland are always going to be there. There's lots of youngsters playing the sport. So it's just making sure we have that process finished in the next sort of uh, four years, really. It's the four-year plan we've put in place. Um, that's the main challenge. So you plan uh, sticking around for a few more years? If I last that long, yes. <laughs> okay, Richard, listen, thank you very much for joining us and the best of luck with your team this week. Thanks very much.